leader of one of the world's biggest drug cartels has been arrested in Texas. Ismael Zambada Garcia, also known as El Maya. The news went around the world. On Thursday, July 25th, 2024, a Beechcraft Super King Air 250 made a surprising landing at Doña Ana County Airport in New Mexico, just 20 miles from El Paso, Texas. On board were the pilot and two passengers. One of them was one of the most wanted criminals on Earth, 76-year-old Ismael El Mayo Zambada, the elusive founding leader of the Sinaloa cartel. He had lived in the shadows for decades and had never been imprisoned. The other passenger was 38-year-old Joaquin Guzman Lopez, known as El Guero Moreno. He is the son of Joaquin El Chapo Guzman and the least publicized of the Chapitos, who control a faction of the Sinaloa cartel. These unexpected arrests captured the media's attention more than any event in the narco world since El Chapo Guzman's trial. Speculation exploded on social media. Some suggested they had surrendered, but the U.S. government's narrative claimed it was not a negotiation, but a formal arrest. El Mayo and Guzman Lopez join a growing list of Sinaloa cartel leaders and associates who the Justice Department is holding accountable in the United States. Then, El Mayo's American attorney, Frank Perez, added more spice to the story. He claimed that Guzman Lopez had kidnapped Zambada and brought him to the U.S. against his will. In the plane, there were snack leftovers, an oxygen mask, and spare zip ties, lending some trust to this version. But such a major betrayal would likely have sparked a violent conflict in Culiacan, which hasn't happened yet. What really happened? Was El Mayo actually betrayed? Or was it all a setup with him negotiating with the U.S. government? We spoke with a dozen sources in Sinaloa, and this is what we found. In this episode of Illicit Investigations, we reveal new details about how El Mayo Zambada and Joaquin Guzman Lopez ended up in U.S. custody. We analyze the different versions about their journey from Sinaloa to New Mexico, and we expose a new threat that the Sinaloa cartel faces. Stay tuned. On July 5th, 2024, our journalists received text and voice messages from two mid-level members of the Sinaloa cartel. They informed us that a significant capture was occurring in Culiacan, the capital city of Sinaloa. According to them, Mexican military officials and U.S. agents were inside a house with Ismael El Mayo Zambada and his son, Ismael Zambada Sicairos, also known as El Mayito Flaco. They are being arrested, they told us. That week, the Mexican authorities were highly active in Culiacan. They raided eight houses, made nine arrests, and seized money, precursor chemicals, and equipment used for fentanyl pill production. It's well known that the U.S. has pressured the Mexican government to target the fentanyl production chain, which has fueled the opioid crisis in the U.S., resulting in hundreds of thousands of losses in recent years. Consequently, arresting key members of the Sinaloa cartel, a large producer of this narcotic, has become a priority. That 5th of July, we expected the news to break, but neither El Mayo Zambada nor his son were arrested. Our sources were firm about the meeting between the Zambadas with U.S. agents. 20 days later, a Beechcraft Super King Air landed in Santa Teresa, New Mexico, carrying Ismael El Mayo Zambada and Joaquin Guzman Lopez, one of the Chapitos. While Guzman Lopez was transferred to Chicago in a Department of Justice jet, where he faces five charges in a federal indictment, El Mayo Zambada remained in El Paso, Texas. He was sent to a county jail and presented in a federal court. The U.S. government's version, supported by Mexico, claims it was a formal capture rather than a surrender. This narrative does not align with testimonies gathered from our sources within the inner circles of the Sinaloa cartel. Although El Mayo Zambada has been the mastermind behind the Sinaloa cartel's expansion for five decades, he has also collaborated with the U.S. government during his clandestine life, providing information that led to significant arrests, including that of El Chapo Guzman in Mazatlan in 2014. El Mayo had been in contact with U.S. agencies, including the DEA and CIA, for many years. Their communication has been sporadic rather than fluid, but Zambada has consistently sought direct contact with the U.S. government. 
The story that Joaquin Guzman Lopez lured El Mayo to a business meeting and then kidnapped him is pure fabrication. According to our sources, El Mayo had ceased attending meetings with the Chapitos over a year ago because of his health. All business dealings have been handled by his son, El Mayito Flaco. El Mayo only held personal meetings with his close family at his ranches hidden in the mountains, giving direct instructions solely to them. He traveled occasionally to Culiacan primarily for medical attention. For several months, El Mayo felt the end was approaching, and he wanted to say goodbye to his most beloved son, Vicente Zambada Niebla, who lives in the U.S. with his family under the Witness Protection Program. He also wanted to see Ismael Zambada Imperial, El Mayito Gordo, who also lives in the United States as a protected witness. With the help of Vicentillo, El Mayo Zambada developed a plan with the U.S. government to surrender, orchestrating it to appear as an arrest operation. Every capture or extradition of a cartel leader in Mexico involves political motivations, and this negotiation was no exception. In the current U.S. political arena, the government wanted a trophy like El Mayo Zambada, and Mexico was willing to give the Democratic Party a present before the November elections. Joaquin Guzman Lopez, the least active member of the Chapitos, was the perfect fit for the plan. He was tired of his fugitive life and wanted to surrender to the U.S. authorities to serve a short sentence and then live freely in America with enough wealth. Joaquin is the most educated of the Chapitos and speaks English. Every detail of the plan was meticulously prearranged. A Beechcraft Super King Air 250, frequently used by the Zambada family and other cartel associates, was assigned a cloned tail number, N287KA, from a similar U.S. aircraft created with tape rather than paint. Cloning tail numbers is a common practice in the cartel world for transporting drugs and fugitives in black flights, where pilots do not file a flight plan with aviation authorities and attempt to evade radar detection. Similar flights are conducted by intelligence agencies like the CIA during clandestine operations. This is why the flight carrying El Mayo Zambada and Joaquin Guzman Lopez to New Mexico does not appear in flight tracking databases. The aircraft departed from a small airstrip near Culiacan, called El Brioso. U.S. federal agents awaited their arrival at the runway of Doña Ana Airport in New Mexico. Two days before, Ovidio Guzman Lopez was moved out from the Metropolitan Correctional Center of Chicago, where his brother Joaquin was going to be imprisoned. It was a win-win plan. The U.S. gained its trophy. El Mayo received preferential treatment by being sent to a county jail instead of a federal prison. Guzman Lopez initiated his cooperation deal, and the Mexican government turned a blind eye as a gesture to the Biden administration. The plan's details were finalized on July 5th in Culiacan, when El Mayo Zambada and El Mayito Flaco met with U.S. agents. El Mayo agreed to surrender provide money and information, and spend his remaining days on U.S. soil close to his beloved sons Vicentillo and El Mayito Gordo. El Mayo discreetly bid farewell to his family in Culiacan days before boarding the plane. The U.S. government agreed to respect El Mayito Flaco's freedom as he is the current leading figure of the Zambada family. And without him, a war in Sinaloa would likely arise. Following the surrender of El Mayo Zambada and Joaquin Guzman Lopez, Culiacan has been calm. If the kidnapping narrative were true, the Chapitos and the Zambadas would be at war. But sources within the cartel indicate that both families are beginning to collaborate to protect Sinaloa from a bigger threat. Nemesio Oseguera Cervantes and his powerful Jalisco New Generation cartel. Now that El Mayo Zambada is out of the picture, the CJNG plans to enter Sinaloa to seize new plazas, a long-standing ambition of El Mancho. As a result, the Zambadas and Guzmans are preparing for another confrontation with the CJNG, this time in Sinaloa. We'll reveal more details about this story in a future episode. This is Illicit Investigations. Subscribe now to our channel to go beyond the headlines.